Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Swati Kundra. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 18th of November. Bangladesh Epic Sports sends two to gallows for war crime. HRW blames Pakistan police for harassing Afghan refugees. And Indian Prime Minister seeks targeted economic sanctions to curb terror funding. And now for all the details. In the wake of the deadly Paris terror attacks, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi has suggested choking off funds to tackle terror. Modi made the comments while addressing an annual conference of federal police and state vigilance bureaus in New Delhi. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi has called for increased global cooperation in fighting the menace of terrorism. Citing the recent deadly terror attacks in Paris, PM Modi said that it has become easy for militant groups to raise funds through illegal sources. The dastardly acts committed in Paris a few days ago are a grim reminder that terrorists have shown remarkable flexibility and adaptability in meeting their funding requirements. They derive funding from a variety of criminal activities, which includes smuggling of narcotics, bank robbery, vehicle theft, fake currency, or from state-sponsored and activities in failed states. Modi suggested several steps which could help in tackling terrorism-related activities. Among them were targeted economic sanctions, which could put a lid on funds raised by terror groups. Disrupting fund flows constraints, the capabilities of terrorists and reduce their ability to execute attacks. This involves putting in place both systematic safeguards and targeted economic sanctions based on credible counter-terrorism intelligence. Targeting proceeds of crime is an important element in the fight against crime. PM Modi's remarks come in the wake of recent terror attacks in Paris which killed 129 people and injured hundreds. The Islamic states claimed responsibility for the attacks and stated that they were in retaliation for French airstrikes in Iraq and Syria. Meanwhile, an influential Indian Islamic organization, Jamaat Ulema Hind, held demonstrations across India to denounce acts of terrorism by the Islamic State. It demanded strict action against the militant group. Bangladesh's Supreme Court on Wednesday upheld the death penalty of Jamaat Islami leader Ali Ehsan Muhammad Mujahid and Bangladesh Nationalist Party leader Salahuddin Kader Chaudhary. The duo was sentenced to death for committing war crimes during the country's liberation war in 1971. Bangladesh Supreme Court on Wednesday rejected final appeals of Ali Ehsan Muhammad Mujahid and Salahuddin Kader Chaudhary against death sentences. The bench delivered both the rulings together. The both, uh, in both the cases, uh, the review has been rejected. Uh, Mr. Mujahid's uh, the conviction stayed and also the Saladin Kadir Chaudhary's conviction stayed. That means their uh, death penalty is restored by the appellate division even under the review. Therefore, they are going to face the death penalty very soon. The duo is now left with the last option of seeking presidential clemency, said counsel of the convicts. Mujahid, who was the chief of infamous Al-Badr force during the freedom struggle of 1971, was sentenced to death for planning and instigating the killing of intellectuals and professionals. In July 2013, the International Crimes Tribunal had sentenced the 67-year-old to death, jailed him for life and sentenced him to five years in prison in five separate charges. The decision was later upheld by the Supreme Court of Bangladesh. Salauddin Kader Chaudhary was a former minister in the Khaled Azir cabinet. He was sentenced to death for committing genocide during the Liberation War of 1971. The Supreme Court rulings could spark protests by their supporters. Bangladesh, which was earlier known as East Pakistan, emerged as an independent country in 1971 after fighting a nine-month-long civil war. The Pakistan army and its local collaborators, like the Jamaat, had unleashed large-scale violence during the period, resulting in the death of some 3 million people. 
Extremists in Bangladesh have targeted another Italian on Wednesday, around one and a half months into Italian citizen Caesar Tevila's murder in Dhaka. 50-year-old Pyro, the latest victim in the series of attacks on foreign nationals in Bangladesh, is fighting for his life after being shot and seriously wounded by unidentified gunman. Last month, a Japanese farmer was also killed by unknown assailants. Islamic State militants had claimed responsibility for earlier attacks on foreigners. The claims, however, were rejected by Bangladesh government, which blamed the growing violence on its domestic political opponents linked to Islamist parties. The death toll from the deadly Rawalpindi-bound train accident in Pakistan's Bolan district has reached 19. The toll could further rise as around a dozen people are in critical condition, officials said on Wednesday. The Jafar Express, carrying around 300 passengers from the provincial capital Quetta to Rawalpindi, derailed on Tuesday. The cause of the accident is not known yet. Earlier this month, four people were killed and eight injured when the Jafar Express hit a homemade bomb planted on a railway track in Mastang district of Baluchistan. Pakistan has demanded evidence from European countries on deportation of any of its citizens held on terror charges. Recently, Islamabad had suspended a readmission agreement with European countries except Britain. Pakistan's Interior Minister Chaudhary Nisar Ali Khan has instructed all diplomatic missions in European capitals to seek evidence in cases of Pakistani immigrants being deported on the terror charges by the host countries. It is a violation of human rights if any Pakistani is deported on terror charges without any proof, Nisar Ali Khan said, according to an official statement. He also added that even the nationalities of many immigrants are not verified to establish whether they are actually Pakistanis or not. Pakistan has also warned airlines that they will be heavily fined if they brought deportees back to Pakistan without the permission of the Interior Ministry or without travel documents. Earlier this month, Pakistan had suspended an agreement on readmission of illegal immigrants with European Union countries except with Britain. Pakistan stated that the suspension of the agreement was due to its blatant misuse. According to Khan, more than 90,000 Pakistanis were sent back last year without proper verification. Pakistan's Army Chief General Raheel Sharif met top U.S. defense officials and discussed defense and security issues in Washington, D.C. on Tuesday. General Sharif is in United States for a five-day official visit. Pakistan Chief of Army Staff General Raheel Sharif met U.S. Defense Secretary Ashton Carter at Pentagon and discussed bilateral defense relations and regional security. During the meeting, Secretary Carter acknowledged Pakistan's contribution in fighting terror and is also said to have assured that U.S. will support Pakistan in fighting extremism. General Sharif also highlighted Pakistan's viewpoint of regional challenges. He also met other senior U.S. officials, including Deputy Secretary of Defense Robert O. Work, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff General Joseph Dunford and Army Chief of Staff General Mark Milley. General Sharif and American officials discussed defense cooperation and military-to-military -military relations. During his five-day visit to the United States, he is expected to meet U.S. Vice President Joe Biden and Secretary of the State John Kerry. Staying on news from Pakistan, the Human Rights Watch has asked Pakistan government to take necessary action in limiting police harassment against Afghan refugees living in Pakistan. The harassment is prompting many Afghans to return to war on Afghanistan and possibly seek asylum in Europe. Pakistan's government should take necessary measures to stop rampant police harassment, threats, and violence against Afghans living in Pakistan, Human Rights Watch has said in a report on Wednesday. There has been a sharp increase in incidents of police abuses against Afghans since the Peshawar Army School attack in December 2014, the report observed. The hostility has prompted fearful Afghans to restrict their movements, leading to economic hardship and curtailing access to employment. Many, as a result, are returning to Afghanistan, 
where they face a widening conflict and continuing insecurity. The Human Rights Watch asked the Pakistan government to refrain from targeting the Afghans living in Pakistan. The Pakistani government should press the police to apprehend perpetrators of atrocities instead of scapegoating the entire Afghan community, said Felim Kinney, Deputy Asia Director at Human Rights Watch. The Pakistani police's outrageous mistreatment of Afghans over the past year calls for an immediate government response, he added. There are 1.5 million registered Afghan refugees and 1 million undocumented Afghans living in Pakistan as of November 2015. The refugees, a large number of them who fled the country over three decades ago, live in the outskirts of border cities like Peshawar. Pakistan had earlier this year begun deporting the undocumented asylum seekers, claiming that they were illegal immigrants. Sri Lankan President Maitripala Sirisena will be taking measures to introduce a new electoral system and abolish executive presidency in the country. It is my expectation to introduce a new electoral system which is responsible to the parliament, abolish executive presidency and transfer the powers of the president to the parliament and independent commissions, Sri Lankan President Sirisena said. Introducing a new electoral system was one of his election promises during the presidential election early this year. The Afghanistan government has said there is a need to crack down on human traffickers in a bid to stop Afghans from fleeing the country. The number of human traffickers has significantly increased in the recent months as thousands of Afghans continue to seek refuge in Europe, Afghanistan's Ministry of Refugees and Repatriation has said. It has urged the Afghan Interior Ministry to crack down on human traffickers who are continuing with their illegal business without fear. The security, intelligence and legal institutions of the country are responsible to counter human trafficking. Our request from security agencies is to take the matter seriously because they have not done enough to curb the problem. MORR spokesman Islamuddin Jurat said, Afghanistan has seen a surge in Taliban and IS-led violence in recent times, forcing the natives to flee from the country. Despite international aid worth billions of dollars to support Afghanistan, reeling under massive insurgency over the past 14 years, around 40,000 Afghans have applied for asylum in the European Union in the first six months of this year, claims EU statistics agency Eurostat. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. Bangladesh Apex Court sends two to gallows for war crime. HRW blames Pakistan police for harassing Afghan refugees. And Indian Prime Minister seeks targeted economic sanctions to curb terror funding. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline. And follow us on Twitter at AsAsia Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.